Make sure the volume is working. Assuming this, there we go. Good, volume is working wonderfully. That there. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, as the description says, just a simple stream today. Uh, if you didn't see the post I put up on the discussion section of the YouTube page, um, during the Olympics, I'm gonna be streaming at noon on Tuesday and Thursday instead of in the evening on Monday and Wednesday. Um, this is so that I can still watch the primetime coverage of the Olympics. And maybe some of you are like that as well. But regardless, here we are. We're going to paint a pink horror. Um, I've already started because of drying time. I didn't want to put this first contrast color on and then I have to wait all day. So this is a Wraithbone Primer and then Volupus Pink over the top of that. So now we'll get into the actual painting. So we're gonna start with the very appropriately named Pink Horror, but we're not going to apply it with a brush, we're going to apply it with a sponge. And this is because, just, just uh, for reference, this is just a piece of pluck foam. Any kind of sponge stuff will do. You can use an actual sponge from like the dollar store or the grocery store or I use pluck foam because I have it around. So we're just gonna dip that in the paint and then dab it off on our paper towel and then just come in and start putting it on here. And the way we're applying this one, um, a lot of people use sponge for texturing and weathering and stuff. But the way we're applying this with this sponge is we're doing basically a dry brush, but we're doing it without the streaking that can come from dry brushing sometimes. And I know if you're careful, you can avoid the streaking, but having to paint like, I don't know, a bunch of these guys, however many there are, I can't remember, in the army, um, I don't want to have to be careful. I want to just be able to go to town. And so this, sponging this on instead of dry brushing means we won't have streaks, we'll just have little tiny like dots of texture and that on a living demon creature is fine because it'll just look like bumps or little things on his skin or whatever but if we don't get those little bumps right as you can see right here we'll just have a nice smooth pink but while still leaving the wash or in this case the contrast paint in the cracks. So that's why we're using this sponge instead of dry brushing. As you can see we have no streaks anywhere. We just have this nice nice color and if we don't have the color it just looks like little dots on the skin. So then that will dry almost immediately just like a dry brush so we're good there. We can go on to the next color. We're gonna use pixie pink from the Army Painter. This is a, a brighter pink than the pink horror we just used. I'm just going to put a little dab of this on a piece of paper here. And then I'm just going to use the same bit of sponge. Make sure to get this new color on the sponge properly. And then I'm just going to start the same thing again. Being gentle because I don't want the I don't want this new paint to go into the recesses. just want to basically highlight what we just did. And some of these models can be a bit of an annoyance to do this too because of their they're kind of got limbs and stuff stretched all over the place, but I think this still will be faster than a dry brush, faster and look better than a dry brush, I should say. So there we go. I think we'll do one more layer of pixie pink and maybe just focus it near the top of the miniature this time for some added bit of highlighting. Why not? Just make 
make sure I get a good coating on the sponge here. And then just tap it in. And we'll do it around the face as well. There we go. There's our pixie pink. A little more focused towards the top of the miniature and around the face. Good. So now we're going to go on to our next contrast paint, which is Leviathan Blue. And this is going to be the inside of the mouth as well as the uh, tongue sticking out. I'm just going to get this in here. And this is the, the darkest blue contrast that they make. And I'm using this one because it the blue contrasts well with the pink, but also because it's so dark, it will in the mouth will look almost black, and so it's good for like looking into a demon's mouth. But then on the tongue will appear blue, so we'll still get that nice contrast. So it basically just saves us having to do two colors. We can just do the one and get everything that we need out of it. And then, I'm just going to rinse my brush to get the paint off and then get some just on the tip here. And I'm just going to do the eyes in this same color. Good. So there's our mouth and our eyes done. Then we will go on to, uh, basically, the next couple things we have are the, either the teeth and the claws and stuff, or the metallic. We're going to do the metallic, just because that blue is still drying. So we'll just try to stay away from that for right this second. And we'll do the gold. So we're using uh, Retributor Armor for this. It's my go-to gold. And any metallic we see on this guy, we're going to paint it in. So there's this right here. He's got basically all these like bits of jewelry on him. There we go. And then I'll just talk about this briefly. Um all the gems and stuff that we see on him. We're gonna paint those in with red, but I'm painting it with red with a paint that doesn't actually exist anymore. Uh, Games Workshop stopped making it. It was the gemstone paint. It's called like Soulstone Red or something. So that's what I would normally use, but because I don't want to suggest a paint that you can't actually get a hold of anymore, um, I'm going to paint them a different way and show you how with just the regular paint we can get the same sort of effect. It always drives me up the wall when I see a cool technique shown off in a video and then I can't actually replicate it because they're using like a a paint that doesn't get made anymore or a super obscure paint that like is only sold in one town in the Czech Republic or something. and. That's probably a bit extreme, but regardless, we'll use just regular current Games Workshop paint and should get it done just fine. Just painting in this hand jewelry here. sure to get all the sides of it. I think this guy is supposed to be the uh, the leader of the pink horrors, so he's got more jewelry than the average pink horror. Oh, I missed a spot on the arm right there. We'll have to touch that up later. Um, if you wanted to save some time on this paint job, you could apply the Volupus Pink that I did with an airbrush. 
it works just fine and you can do a whole bunch at once um, I personally just enjoy painting it on with a with a brush I like doing that so I I do that regardless of the time it might it takes a little bit more time but not not tons more and I enjoy it so I think this is the last piece of jewelry here on him. Yes, it is. All right, so there's the gold done. Okay, and then I just need to grab... go all right so i think we can probably just go straight into the gems so like i said normally i would paint these gems with the games workshop gemstone paint which i can grab actually in case you guys happen to have access to it and want to use this it's spirit stone red just make sure to shake it really 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 well because the uh the pigment will separate in this um, often when I shake this, I actually strap it to a, a sawzall and like tape it to the blade and then turn it on for a couple seconds. That's how much shaking this thing will require. But that's not made anymore, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to start with Mephiston Red. I'm going to do the exact same thing that Soul Stone Paint does for us, or Spirit Stone Paint, but without that. I don't know why they stopped making that, to be honest. It was a great paint. But it is what it is. So all these gems I'm just painting in with this Memphis in red. Yeah, these could be gems. Why not? If you're painting these guys, just double check for rings. They have rings sometimes that like to hide in their skin. Alright, and this one right here. Alright. I think that's all of them. So we'll let that dry. And then we'll come back and do the next step on there. Uh, so we're now we're going to do the teeth and the claws. For that, we're going to use Rackarth Flesh. Some of them also have horns, like this guy does, so we're going to paint those too. Not all of them have horns, I think. I think some of them just have tentacles coming out of their head, which I would do in the same color as their skin. And you can pick individual teeth out if you want. Um, personally, I just, for this first step, I just paint over the whole bank of teeth and then we'll put a wash on them and then I'll pick out individual teeth with the highlight. Make sure to get the inside of the teeth as well. Good. All right. So then we'll do claws. I'm not going to paint this skull that's on his base because that'll get covered when I do the base texture anyway. And then any bits of it that are sticking up after that, I will go back and paint them. But I'm not going to waste time painting it now if I'm just going to cover most of it later. So just be careful when you're painting these nails you don't want to get this color all over your nice pink skin you've just worked hard on
Also, if you wanted to take this a step further, you could do the teeth and the nails in different colors. Um, like I've seen some people do the the nails in black or in a very dark color instead of doing them the same color as the teeth. But for this tabletop quality, one color suits me just fine. back of this nail right here. I think that's all that. So just the horns left now. And these horns are uh, not articulated. That's not the word I want. They're segmented, I guess. Um, and so they're going to take the wash that we put on these really well. So that's nice. We'll have a little more time consuming process to highlight them, but that's okay. Make sure to paint all the way down to the base of these horns, but not to paint onto the skin. Sometimes also they will have little pieces of jewelry around the bottom of their horn, so if that's there, make sure to pay attention and to paint that gold. Alright, so that's that for the nails and teeth. Now we're going to go back to our gems, and we're going to take this Storm Shield Technical Paint. We're going to open that, and then we're also going to take Grey Knight Steel, and we're going to open that. So then what we're going to do is take first our technical paint, and we're going to put a dollop of it on each gemstone. And I'm just going to do a couple at a time so that we don't mess it up here. So make sure there's a good dollop on there. It'll look like it's kind of an off-white milky color, but it'll dry clear, don't worry. Do that and rinse your brush off and then I'm just going to take the tiniest tiniest amount of this Grey Knight Steel and touch the bubble of Storm Shield that we had and it's not even a color this really you won't see the Grey Knight Steel but what you're doing is depositing the little bits of mica from the Grey Knight Steel into this storm shield to really help the shine on these gemstones. Just making sure again that you use the tiniest, tiniest amount of Grey Knight Steel. So we're going to do this again on these. Put a dollop of it on each gem. Rinse the brush off. And then just the tiniest amount of Grey Knight Steel. If you see your gem changing color, you have too much granite steel and you need to get rid of some of it. You don't want your gem to appear silver, you want it to appear red still. But just depositing that little bit of pigment into each of these will really help them just look like gems on the miniature. So let's see, we did those, we have this one still, and these two, and then these. And the great thing about these gems is that they're in inlaid in a metallic color, they're inlaid in gold. So if we put a little bit too much of the Storm Shield medium on, um, it'll just go on the gold and be fine. Almost made a mistake there. Do not make sure your brush is nice and rinsed off before you dip it back in your Storm Shield pigment. You don't want to be depositing that metallic pigment into your Storm Shield. And 
And if you do what I did just here and get a little too much, just take some Storm Shield again and just mix it into that silver. You'll be all set. All right, I think that's all of them. And as luck would have it, our horns and nails are all dried now, so we can move on to null oil, which we're going to put on these. So we're just going to take this and put it on all the nails and stuff. I like to concentrate the wash at the base of the nails and the base of the horns just to help them blend into the pink better. That looks good. We're also going to do this on the gold, this wash, but I'm not going to do it yet because we just finished painting those gemstones. We don't want to mess up that, the drying of the gemstones there. And we're not going to paint this on the gemstones, but just in case we miss or something, I don't want to, uh, don't want to go there immediately. So then I'm going to take some of this and just put it in the deepest of recesses on the miniature. So right there around the face, down here under this little tail or whatever it is. And this is just to help add some definition to the muscles. You could also do this with a brown if you wanted them to look a little more natural. I like the black personally, but all right. So now I'm going to start in on the gold here, and I'm just going to be careful to go not on the gem itself because we just applied some gloss medium and some silver to those, and if we get the null oil on there it will significantly prevent that from drying shiny. You could use uh, gloss null oil if you wanted, but I prefer the flatter look on the gold itself, but have the gems stay shiny. So again, just be careful. And don't put it directly on the gemstones, just on the gold around it. And also, you can make sure to get this stuff around where the gold is like laying on the skin, like right here, so that we have some more definition on that. Back here. some right there. There we go. Alright, so that's that. We just have one more step basically. Oh, missing some definition in the horn there. Alright, our wash might be a little wet still, but we're gonna use, oh forgot to show, we're gonna use some Dorn Yellow now, which is an edge paint think they still make these. I just went on a long thing about how not using paint they don't make anymore. If they don't make this anymore, I apologize. I think they still do though. Um, but any pale yellow will work, to be honest. So then I'm just going to find the tips of these horns and the individual teeth and just paint them in like this. And I'm using a pale yellow instead of a pure white or anything, just because, you know, he's a demon. So, 
a tiny, tiny shift towards yellow will help the help him look more demonic and not like he has pure, clean white teeth. You could also do this with a much, much heavier color um, to make it look really gross. Like you could do it with a brown or something, but. I'm just going through and grabbing these lines on here very quickly. Again, going for tabletop so you don't have to be super accurate with them. And then I'll just pick out a nail or two. yellow on there. Alright, I think we're golden. The one other thing you could do is put, if you wanted, put a light colored dot of blue or something in the eyes. Um, I kind of like the like the soulless just pit of the eye, but to each their own, you could always mix it up. But, in any event, that's the end of this stream. Simple pink horror for all your zinchi needs. Thank you everybody for watching, whether you watched live or are watching sometime in the future. I 